Good evening, everyone, respected community members in China, India, and abroad. Welcome to Indian Association's Leadership and Motivational Talk Series. We are excited to have you with us, and we hope today's session would be an enriching experience for all of us. Firstly, for the benefit of those who have joined for the first time today, let me say a few words about Indian Association. Since 2004, Indian Association Shanghai has been serving the Indian community in Shanghai and Great China. Today, IA has a reach of close to 3,000 people through our email, social media channels, as well as personal interaction. IA has been organizing charity drives, business mixtures, cultural and sports events, bringing together the community in China as well as back in India. The services of IA have been recognized by Shanghai government by awarding the prestigious Magnolia Award in 2018. So that's a short introduction for those who have joined for the first time today. And today in our uh, leadership and motivational talk series, we would be talking to uh, Brigadier Sushil Bhasin, who would be uh, presenting us or who would be talking to us uh, in this uh, leadership and motivational talk series. So today we have Brigadier Sushil Basin as our honorable guest speaker. Uh, before we move further, let me just show a quick AV. Brigadier Sushil Bashin is a soldier turned educator and trainer. He served the Indian Army for 34 years. Thereafter, in the next 16 years that followed, he's in the space of transforming lives, bringing his Army values and experiences to every, everyday life. He focuses on human-centric self-development areas to include leadership, teamwork, time management, and related human behaviors using experiential learning and facilitation as his core tools. He is also a TEDx. He has done two TEDx programs, speaker and a global keynote speaker, a podcaster and author of six books. He is former president of Professional Speakers Association of India, Mumbai chapter and member of Asian Professional Speaker Singapore. Bigger Basin has helped a lot of organizations in India as well as abroad uh, having here are some of the testimonials uh, and the partners with whom he has worked recently. Now I would like to invite IA President Mr. Rahul Bagre to welcome our honorable guest. Over to you, Rahul. Thank you. Thank you, Nadine. On behalf of Indian Association China and the broader Indian community in China, I would like to welcome Brigadier Basin to this leadership talk series organized by IA. It has been a very successful initiative uh, to talk to many distinguished experts in their own field and learn from them. We look forward to inspire ourselves uh, from your session today. Welcome again, and over to you, Brigadier. Thank, Thank you, Rahul. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, uh, so without further ado, I would invite uh, Brigadier Basin to please uh, start. And 
uh, also uh, you would be sharing your own screen, uh, computer screen. So shall I stop sharing here or here? Uh, sorry, Nitin, would you like to show the other AV first? Oh, yes, we... that's right. Yeah. Yeah, sorry for that. So before we move further, there is another AV which set the context of today's talk. So let me uh, move to that AV first. Tough times don't last, but tough leaders do. And when the going gets tough, the tough gets online. The prevailing unpredicted environment created by the coronavirus has imbalanced our lives and businesses in many ways. In simple terms, we are on handling chaos. Are you facing some challenges that I hear every day? That my business plans have gone for a six, that I have no clue, goals that are valid anymore. My revenue streams are diminishing every day. I'm uncertain. I don't know what is happening. It's causing anxiety. Communications with teams has become a challenge. How long will it last? No one knows. Morale of the team is so low. What do I do? I don't know how to handle logistics. Now, teams don't have Wi-Fi at home. They don't have laptops and bandwidth. They ask me a question. Well, how long will I get our salaries? And I don't know how long I'm going to be able to pay them. Are we stuck? We are stuck because we are operating in a VUCA world in a darker shade. And here we are to find some solutions. I'm Brigadier Sushil Masin a time investment strategist, speaker, trainer, and an author with an experience of 34 years in the army and 15 years in the corporate world. Leadership in times of transition. And I'm privileged to be facilitating this program. My dear leaders, we are all facing this environment. Time is at premium. We have to do a lot. And we need to bounce forward when the upswing comes in a very, very positive way. How do we do it? We need to be on our toes, get faster than others. When others are running, we need to sprint. I will help you with army lessons, which are practical and doable in the corporate environment. I am going to help you with my experiences in the corporate world. Whether you are a leader at any level or you are a business owner, you will need these tools, technologies, and simple ways of coming out of this crisis. I will use my facilitation and experiential learning on an online Zoom environment. So if you are ready, come ahead, join me to get the best out of it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, that was a great AV. So, uh, Bigida sir, shall we now uh, let you share your screen and continue the session, please? Yeah, thank you. So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and I prefer calling everyone boys and girls because ever since I left the army, where we were used to saying ladies and gentlemen all the time, and we many times realized that there were no ladies around when we said that. But ever since I left the army, I came to this, you know, wonderful, colorful world of yours. I stopped saying ladies and gentlemen, I say boys and girls. And I say that not for your benefit, it's for my benefit because I feel young that way. So how many of you are prepared or how many of you have an objection to be called a boy or a girl? Can I please have a show of hands to say if anyone is objecting to being called a boy or a girl? Okay, I didn't see any hands and I can't see everyone. No, I haven't seen any hands going up, which means that you have not broken the record. Otherwise, there could have been history creation today because I must have asked this question to more than 40,000 people in the last 17 years and not a single person ever objected to it. So your status for the next one hour or so is going to be boys and girls. After that, you can revise if you so like. Okay, so boys and girls, can I please, please have you on your cameras. I like to keep my session very interactive. There are going to be a lot of questions and I would like you to participate. Uh, so please, yes, so I can see now Sunita, Manisha, they're all 
but manisha you have to be a little more uh, smiling because life is not as serious yeah now i can see your smile and it looks nice okay so boys and girls my very first slide is showing you a word called future and this future is something which we all deal with every moment every time whether that future is an hour away or the future is a year away or the future is 10 years away but we are always thinking about the future 60000 thoughts a day and most of them are related to the future right now i am looking at the future to say and the thought that is coming to my mind uh, very strongly i was talking to nitin about it will i be able to complete my presentation in 1 hour that is my question my few so i'm i'm a little worried not i'm not worried i'm concerned will i be able to complete the presentation in 1 hour okay because i have lots to tell you and uh, so i want to know from you by uh, either putting in the chat box or raising your hand is it okay if we spill over a little more if we go to about 1 hour 15 minutes or so will that be okay with you or are you in a hurry to run away after 1 hour so anurag's hand goes up first thank you very much anurag for your support yeah i want generally yes soman says yes i only i see raj bhan he says yes okay so i will try and finish uh, ya yeah, tohen also says yes so what we'll do is those who are interested can then stay on and those who are not can leave but we'll we'll see that we give you value i'm absolutely committed to giving you value for your time because i am very conscious about not wasting people's time right so let's proceed further are you future ready now future is something we are always worried about we keep thinking about it and we are making our present get impacted by the future very simple sentence but it has depth that we keep ruining our future because of the perception we have of the future so i would like to here ask all of you to write down in the chat box what is that one word that comes to you when you think of future what does future mean to you let's see some fast fingers on your type uh, on your keyboard progress future is progress very good unpredictable okay unpredictable challenge dreams adaptability hope enjoyment wow security sustainable growth planning peace relaxed retirement wow so you have seen that just in less than a minute this one word has created different perceptions different perceptions and therefore future for us is the lens we see it through what is our lens what does is the future scary we are always wondering you know and what is future future is a time which is yet to come okay so the question that comes to your mind is what is going to happen now you may Oh, I love this end of the rat race. That's very good, J. A. Yeah. And second is, and please uh, carefully listen to this part: an expectation, an expectation of advancement or progressive development. Now, when I want the future to be something, and it doesn't turn out to be that, that is what is my main concern, my main worry. So, therefore. a lot depends on how you place your expectations what color of a lens do you use when you look at future that is very important right so now what do you think of future is it scary is it bright is it full of hopes do you see opportunities yes it depends on your perception your attitude your attitude that is very very important okay so let me tell you that happiness and success 
depends on your preparedness for future for with adaptability and some people have said that i'm very happy that these words have come through from you that if i am adaptable i am prepared it's something like a cricket uh, game of cricket see the ball that comes to you you are not sure what type of a ball it will be will it be a full toss will be a wide will it be a proper ball will it... i keep thinking till the ball lands up there but in all my net practice all the time what i am doing i am practicing for all types of contingencies let any ball come am i able to handle or play any ball so are you playing the balls that future, that life brings to you if you can be prepared for this then your happiness and your success level goes up your happiness index is something i am very concerned about because our state of mind depends upon our level of thoughts and we can control our thoughts i'll be talking about how we can control our thoughts a little later but yes you know in the army we go for an operation and we plan it to the hilt to the last t we plan 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 and you'll all agree that army does meticulous planning when we go in for an operation but let me tell you that that plan lasts only till the contact with the enemy is made and the moment the contact with the enemy is made there is chaos and in peace time all that we do is train ourselves train our jawans to handle chaos are you prepared to handle the chaos that comes in your life how do you take that chaos as something we are going to be talking about and recently you know we have all gone through this chaos which took the world over you know the whole world nobody was spared no country was spared no religion was spared no gender was spared it didn't matter whether you are a prime minister of a country or an auto rickshaw driver everyone got impacted directly indirectly little more but everyone got impacted so therefore you will see that the same environment some people survived and some people thrived and some people failed miserably what was the difference it was the same covid for everyone but we reacted responded differently we adapted differently we took different actions and that is what makes a difference right so becoming future ready is also actually a you know taking care of the resilience that can i come out of it as soon as possible can i handle a situation or do i get into a panic mode so these are some of the questions that we can be asking ourselves so the first thing that happens is that when you think of the future and sometimes like what is happening nowadays with many of us because of covid uncertainties are there although things are becoming better but still there are uncertainties and in those uncertainties the question is are you worried are you worried okay and what is worry we must first understand what is worry worry is those thoughts which feed you anxiety stress and fear and what is fear false evidence appearing real i want to ask you all how many times have you ever and please be honest about it and let me either have it in the chat or i i would love if people unmute themselves and tell me or raise hands let me see if i can get the uh, get the okay just one second yeah i am oh no sorry 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 okay i want to ask this question how many times have you ever worried about the results of an exam you went for an exam you came out and let's say the results came after one month how many of you in your life sometimes have worried for that one month will i pass will i not pass may i have some responses to that please either on yeah okay i've got what i was looking for yeah so whether you respond on the uh, on the chat in the chat box or you respond uh, verbally or raise your hand how many of you raise your hand raise, raise your electronic hand that you worried that will i pass or not and how many times it happened that you worried and you worried and you worried and you passed yes or no 
How many times in your life you have worried for something that never happened? Ye kisi ko pata to nahi chal jayega. Oh my God. And then kisi ko pata nahi chala. Good. Bach gaye. How many times do we do we punish ourselves by our negative thoughts? I love Nishita's smile, and I know that Nishita is thinking of something. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, so I would love to see more people on the cameras because that makes very good interaction, and uh, the, the session uh, doesn't become a lecture, and I don't like lectures at all. Okay, so we are generally worried about things that never happen. So why are we worried? Now that is something that we want to handle today. And I hope that by the end of this session today, you would have some lessons, some uh, actions that you can take to make your life better when you are thinking about the future. Okay. And uh, some of you who are serious about your life, and want to do it. And the very fact that you're here on a Sunday afternoon, uh, investing your one hour, choosing to invest your one hour into this session means you're serious. You may like to take down some notes because I'm sure there will be some areas where you will get excited and say, ah, this is exactly what I was looking for. And if you find something like that, please make a note of it. Raul, your hand is up. Are you... Uh, is there a question or uh, okay? Suresh's hand is also up. Okay. Now, what worry does is it damages our self confidence and problem solving capability. Sometimes, and not sometimes, mostly, the worries appear to be bigger in our head than they really are, they are illusions. They are illusions. They are like, you know, that, sh that in the dark when you see bhoot or bhoot hota nahi hai. Worry is just like that. It is like a bhoot which never exists. Right? Now, what you can do, and I'll talk a little bit. I won't spend too much of time. But writing down worries enables us to gain perspective over what are genuine concerns and hypothetical worries. This is what Fiona Hall has said. Fiona Hall is a psychologist and she has written a lot about this subject and anyone who's interested can let me know and I will give you some references if you want to go deeper into this. I know how many of you, when you are worried about something, find somebody's shoulders to cry on, somebody you want to vent out your feelings, somebody who's a confidential friend of yours where you go and tell him or her, that's this is what I'm worried about. And just by saying it out, your worry becomes less. So that's not a bad thing to do. But another option is to write down, to start a worry journal. To start a worry journal, and I'll go a little more a little bit into that process a little later. Okay. So worry causes more worry. That's another issue. So let's see how we can handle worrying. Now, the point is, when I go into the sea, can I do something? Can I control the sea? Certainly not. I can't control the sea. But what I can do is, I can learn to swim in the rough unknown sea. Let's today make a conscious effort to say, how am I getting prepared for the future? What can I do? I can't control COVID. I can't control government orders. I can't control weather. I can't control traffic. None of those things are within me. So why shouldn't I focus on what I have and not what I don't have? Why should I focus on something which I have no control over? So in life, there are three areas. The full control area, which is generally your thoughts. Nobody can stop you from thinking. Nobody can stop you from thinking, not your parents, not your teachers, not, and nobody stops you from thinking. 100% full control area. Your actions to some extent, because there will be some actions which people don't let you take. Your society doesn't let you take, your family doesn't let you take. Okay. 
so there are areas of full control there are areas of no control i can't control the traffic i can't control the pollution no control area and then there are some areas which are of partial control partial control where for example in my case i can partially uh, control my wife partially maybe 10% okay which means i can influence her maybe i can partially and that will be even drop down from 10% to maybe 2% control my children today because they control me rather than me controlling them so learn the three circles of influence and work more on those which you can do something so i can learn how to swim 100% in my capability but i can't control the sea now let's not keep blaming the sea so as the sea kharab hai and uh, recently i heard of, uh, i had gone through a a speaker from uh, malaysia called captain ariva who's a merchant navy captain and he talked of the attitude that he had a boss he worked under and every time he would come and he would say oh today the sea is so beautiful and he said sir but there is storm in the sea he says but you know if the storm is there at least now that is not there he would give you 10 reason why even the storm is okay so the attitude the lens through which you are seeing that storm also makes a difference right now this is a perfect perfect example of how do you handle a worry so the first question you ask yourself is do you have a problem in life yes you have a problem can you do something about it if yes then please go and do it and why worry if you can't do anything about it then what does worry help you in and here can i ask somebody can anyone tell me of any instance in your life when you had a problem and you worried and you worried and you worried and that worry solved the problem raise hands raise hands if any time worrying for a problem was a solution then i would like to copy paste that and tell everyone guys come on when you have a problem please worry like so and so does please give me that template how did you worry and resolve your problem kalpesh do you have a story to share on because your hand is up so i i going to tell me how worrying helped you solve a problem no i think he put his hand up and forgot to put it down yeah kalpesh yeah, no, i guess you want to yeah i can put it down yeah No, no, no. I just because um, you just said, was there ever a situation where you were worried so much that uh, you eventually solved the problems? I said, yeah, that's happened many times. Uh, so that's why I raised my hand. Okay, so no, no. T- tell me, when did you solve a problem by worrying a lot? Mm. Uh, my. many instances uh uh sometimes it just comes to you right when you think about something it just happens and uh that happens very uh very often uh but are you talking about an, an example yes see i'll tell you what there's a difference between worrying and concern which also i'll come to a little later and more importantly let me tell you that if you think of the future and say what can go wrong and prepare for it that is not worrying that is not worrying that is planning okay so we go into the war and we say what can go wrong if the enemy comes from here if he does this if he doesn't bring his tanks we we look at all possible contingencies so if i am going on a car journey i say what if i have a puncture so okay i am prepared for it i've got my puncture material i've got my jack so i check so this is not worrying i'm not worried about a tire puncture i'm planning for if there's a tire puncture what will i do this is not worrying but i am saying that something happened and you worried worried and that worry solved the problem may i add something here uh, brigadier sure sure yeah sure i uh, like what sometimes i feel i i'm not sure you are expert in this but sometimes i feel that when you worry uh, you it works for me like my brain works in a different way uh, either it's a fight or flight mode like i feel like somehow i like my thinking capabilities or my problem solving skills i i want to find some solution so to some extent 
worry sometime help sometimes it help if you are worrying for some situation i agree with you like if you worry a lot then uh, it is kind of uh, like this is a very good diagram which you have shown it tells us that situations are not in our control then why to worry but it works for me like if i'm thinking or if i'm worrying for any situation my brain gives me like it works fast maybe or maybe i am in in as i said earlier i am in fight or flight mode i don't know what happens but yes solution keeps on popping like this you know you you get multiple solution which maybe if you are sitting relaxed you don't get that i'm i'm not Nisha, sure whether i'm much. i'm just fine right. with your Nisha, question thank you or very not much. manisha thanks a lot i think there is something common between you and me i also work a lot so you know this is not really worrying uh, what i would call it and relate to is that this is um, your problem solving capabilities come go uh, go up when you work under pressure so it's not worry it's pressure it's some situation which is creating urgency and last minute like i'm telling you today i'm doing a lot of things i i'm i'm talking of certain things which i never planned it's not in my script because last minute some ideas will come and say okay oh, example 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 and then the example comes okay but if i have to listen uh, arrive at that one week earlier it won't so yes pressure can or a crisis can create a solution okay so but let's not uh, let's understand what is worry and i'll come to it a little later okay so thank you very much and i am going to be talking to kalpesh and manisha again at the end of the talk to see if what we are going to cover later uh, could uh, clarify some of those issues that we are talking about right now right so do you have a problem in life no i don't have a problem then in any case why do you have to worry so if you keep this i'm i'm telling you have this chart on your wall and it will really help you when you get involved in any worry now here is something about the journal that we were talking about right now if you uh you can keep a diary and put in the center of the page put a blog and put your worry in that any one worry and then around that please write down what can you do about it so you first say what's the event okay what is the event what are your initial feelings what are your initial thoughts and then what are the learnings what can i do from it then reframe that word or reframe that worry and say oh i can do this about it that means i'm finding solutions and then after that you come to your thoughts which are after reflection which means you filtered you you've reasoned it out with yourself why am i worrying what will help me what will it do brigadier if i may I... intervene please for a minute just yeah, i'll ahead. take few seconds uh, uh, if if we can define what is a worry then i think it will become much easier to understand your uh, uh, okay. talk okay yeah yeah so i am I'll, i'll just come to it just give me a second uh, just give me a little time and we'll come to that okay what's a worry right uh okay right so thoughts and reflections and then you will be able to control your worry so there is a way of this is this is a little format of writing a worry journal okay now here i will before i come to this let me put a stop to it and say what is worry no worry is when negative thoughts drive you to some expect you know some fears that may or may not happen so as i said please differentiate it between a worry and a concern worry is when the situation is controlling you worry is when the situation is controlling you you are not controlling it which means that you, you are getting swayed by negative thoughts which are landing up uh, uh, resulting or leading you to fear leading you to negativity that is really a worry worry is something that you know uh, you are responding to what's ever happening you are not proactive you are reactive whereas when we are talking about a concern concern is a little more positive i am concerned about my children's future 
which means I'm now planning their future. I'm doing all that I can to make sure that I give them a good future. But I'm not worried. Worried is I have to say, oh my God, if it doesn't happen, then what will we do? And if it doesn't happen, then what will we do? All that. You know. That is where the difference between concern and worry. Concern is okay. Worry is... It gives you, it stops you from logical thinking. So that is why we are not... We are wanting to see that we ensure we don't worry unnecessarily. Okay. So I'll move forward. Now, when we have a crisis and a crisis could be a small crisis. Crisis could be that I have lost the keys of my car. Crisis could be that I went to the airport and I found that I missed a flight. And crisis could be a, whether it was a world war crisis, whether it was a recession of 2008 and 9, whether it was COVID, from a small crisis to a big crisis, there is a process that a crisis goes through. First of all is that the crisis comes as a surprise. Some crisis uh, can be predicted, some cannot be. So like, for example, COVID came as a big surprise. Nobody had ever predicted it. But sometimes an earthquake comes and that was predicted. So, but it does have an element of surprise. The second is that when a crisis comes, the first reaction of a normal human being is that you lose hope. And the, and the thought that comes to your mind is, what if it doesn't, what if I can't get out of it? The third is it now brings in uncertainty. We are so comfortable with certainty that we don't like uncertainty. We are uncomfortable in uncertainty. And uncertainty is now causing a concern, worry, issue, uh, panic, whatever. <coughs> Along with that, you get into a stress mode. And then all crises are demanding quick reaction, quick decision. Because if you don't react quickly, the problem keeps expanding. So this is about handling a crisis. I'll take you through a little video to give you a little example. And of course, ignore the word time here because I do it in my time management classes. So I've used the same video, but I will explain it in a little different way. I just want to check if you can hear the sound. Is the sound audible? So please share the screen. Is this is the screen not shared? No, uh, I think so. Okay, Achha, just a second. I know what happened. Why the screen is not shared? It was already okay. Just one second. And now we can see. Okay. And also tell me if you can uh, hear the sound. Was the sound audible? Yes. Now, everything in our life has a certain pattern. Okay, if you're going on a flight, there's a pattern. You'll go to the airport, you'll check in, then you'll go to the security. Everything has got a pattern. The waves have got a pattern. They go up and they go down. There's a pattern to it. If there's a high tide, they'll go up higher. If there's a low tide, it'll go up lower, but they go up and down. What happens is when this pattern gets broken, that is where crisis comes in. Where the normal routine, the normal thing you were doing, we were going to malls, we were socializing, we were doing anything, suddenly a lockdown comes. 
mask pehno social distancing it was never there earlier so what happened the pattern got broken we were uncomfortable i wrote an article in the first week of the first lockdown in india and i said why are you all guys panicking this is no quarantine you have been told to stay in your house now you are staying in your own house you are not staying on a railway platform what is the panic about you have got internet you got electricity we kept getting food there is nothing that stopped really i said quarantine to wo tha when i was sitting in the beginning of my career in 1971 sitting at nathula post where you only saw mountains of white color you didn't see any color you didn't see any girls which we really wanted to see that time you got a newspaper after one week you got a letter after 15 days that was quarantine in 1984 first time after my staff college i went to deserts Three months, we were in a small village. The village population was less than eight hundred to thousand people. You can imagine the small village, and we used to get one bucket of water a day in which you had to manage everything. And if you put the mug down into the bucket, you'll get sand in your hair coming up. Although I don't have hair, but I still used to have sand in them, right? Now, when I came home after three months. and i was having a bath and i was enjoying i was probably singing and enjoying and my wife said what happened i said i am enjoying a shower after 3 months i had never seen flowing water that was quarantine so it is attitude it is attitude it is seeing do you see the positives in that do you do you concentrate on what you have or do you concentrate on what you don't have i used to sit down and in the uh, during uh, lockdown and ask my family members my friends kya kami hai dekho khana mil raha hai dawai mil rahi hai after very short time amazon pe saman ghar aa raha hai electricity hai internet hai zoom hai zoom was another blessing that came up so if i concentrate and make a list and i want to give you this idea whenever you are worried about anything in life whenever you are concerned whether you know where future is creating a little stress in you just write take a piece of paper and say what is causing you concern so i don't have this i don't have this i'm not sure whether i'll have my job i don't know whether i'll this keep writing that down and along that write what you have and you'll say find that what you have list will be longer the moment you write that your your stress levels will go down try it out any time it works very well if you are very angry with somebody what are you angry for he said this he shouldn't have said this he abused me he did that okay how many times in your life was he good to you when you start writing that you will you will not get any uh, as angry any more very practical hints and i have tried them out i am not telling you anything which is theory i have done it it works okay so we'll go forward now what's happened there are two of them uh okay so here what we are talking about basically when we were talking about the time wave or the surfing the wave is that do i control do do i manage to move along with the wave do i move move along with the wave i am soon going to be talking about dancing with uncertainty do i oppose it or do i go along with it do i go with the flow so do i go along with the flow of the wave or do i panic and drop down and drown so this is my choice now i am going to tell you another formula of life i learned it in 2006 directly from jack canfield i as many of you may have read it is one of his chapters in his book called success principles and i am very fond of this e plus r is equal to o which is which stands for event plus response is equal to outcome now i will take you through uh, an example 
of 2000 and 2005 2005 or 2006 i don't remember i think it was 2005 when we had floods in mumbai i don't know how many of you remember or and anyone from mumbai probably would remember or you may have heard about it first time the city was totally disabled trains were not running everything was happening so very very uh, uh, very chaotic state that happened electricity went out for one and a half days there was no electricity mobiles were not being charged tv was not on you didn't know what's happening on the 20s uh, on the uh, if this uh, sorry it happened on the 2006 2006 and it was i used to remember dates i'm forgetting Ju now. july 20, 20, 26, july, it was july 2005 july 2005 26 July. No, no, it was it was 2005, July 25th. Yes. 26. Yes, ah, yes. Okay, okay. Now that is the correct one. Yes. 25th July 2005. Right. Now, my wife was in Delhi. I was in Mumbai. My daughter and I was at home. In fact, I was leaving in the morning and somebody said, don't come to the camp where I had a camp. There, there was a problem. We didn't know Mumbai had a problem. At four o'clock, I was working in my house. It was raining outside. I didn't care. I didn't go and see how much rain it is. Like you normally don't. At four o'clock, I got a uh, call from my daughter who used to work in ZTV that time in Varli. And she says, uh, Papa, uh, it's raining a lot. There are floods and, um, imminent. And uh, we have been told to leave. So I am leaving with, there's a friend of hers and Kalash. And she said, we have four friends in a car. And I'm not alone, so don't worry about it. And uh, I may not be able to, and I'll give you a call when I'm near our home. Now from Varli, after about one and a half hour, she calls me up and I, she, I said, where are you? She said, we have reached Mahim. And all of you know Bombay from Varli to Mahim is hardly any distance. And she had taken one and a half hours to cover that distance. Then she said, everyone's battery is going down. Nobody will be able to now talk. But don't worry, I'm not alone. I'm safe. And then for the next 24 hours, I didn't know where my daughter was. Right. On the 27th morning, when the light came and people could charge and you saw the TV, I remember a NDTV uh, reporter going on the roads. There were some cars floating around uh, on the sides of the road. Uh, and the traffic was there. Very few people were had uh, had the courage to go out that time because the uh, police was announcing that don't go out unless you have to. So this NDTV, uh, NDTV uh, reporter went and put his mic in front of a driver and said, so what do you think of the situation? He said, what bloody situation? It's horrible. Bombay is not a place to live in. He kept complaining till he got fed up and he took out the mic and went to another person. And he said, sir, uh, what do you feel about what's happening? So he just first had a pause. Nonsense. There's nothing to feel about. He went to the third person and he said, um, what is your response to the situation? He said, nothing. It's rained. It's rained more than it normally does. And there was a high tide. So it's okay. And the cameraman then puts the camera focus onto the co-driver's seat where there's a casserole and there's a thermos flask and there are a couple of magazines lying there. So he said, so what's this? He said, therefore, yesterday when I was coming back, I'm very fond of my tea and I couldn't get tea in anywhere in Bombay. So I have to go today. I told my wife, my wife was discouraging me from coming, but we have a base, uh, we have a go down in a basement and my friend who stays far away told me, you are nearer, go and have a look. So I am just going there. So she said, but what is all this? He said, no, I've got my tea. She's made me some sandwiches. I've got some magazines. I'm listening to music. When the car moves, it's okay. When a tar car doesn't move, I am enjoying myself. Now the point is, let's get back to the slide and say, for all the three people, the event was same. But they, all the three people had different outcomes. Why? Because their response was different. When you can't have any control on the event, you only have to worry about your response to change your outcome. 
otherwise you will keep having the same outcome that you are having so this i found is a very very practical very strong formula of life learn to control your life through your responses and not wishing that the event could be what it was or what it would be you know when you predict your future and you have expectations which i told you right in the beginning your expectations are the ones that are causing that worry and stress so in any given situation 10% is what happens and 90% is how we react to it so let's learn this very simple formula of life and live by it i think we will control our worries control our concerns for future now we all are living in a vuka world which i'm sure you all know and i will not go into too many details i've been speaking on this subject for many years now and this vuka world which this term came out uh, it was used by the us marines and came out in the late 90s and then it got incorporated in the corporate world and people have been talking a lot about it and i realized that that happened in 90s what about now there are a lot of other things that have added to the volatility uncertainty complexity and ambiguity of the new normal world so i added 3d to it and i have been speaking on a topic called vuka 3d world what happened after that was the three d's that made it even worse is the disruption the diversity and digital these three things have made the vuka world even more complex okay so volatility is when there's an increasing rate of change the speed of change earlier change was always happening but now the change is happening too fast and for young people when i talk to them in colleges and all i tell them this is going to be your major concern major concern a person who succeeds in now in the current world will be the one who learns how to manage to cope up with the speed of the change uncertainty is when there's no clarity for the future multiplicity of decision factors relate to complexity and ambiguity is that there may not be a right answer now just a little bit to show what is uncertainty what is it is a inability to know everything the lack of predictability and likelihood of surprise events this is what gets us into uncertain mode which we are very uncomfortable with i have learned in life that there are three types of problems one is a simple problem one is a complicated problem and the third is a complex problem so simple problem is very easy i have to go from delhi to bombay so my problem is how much money do i need and all i know the problem uh, i know the end result i know that i need to work on it i'll find some solutions and i'll get them which flight to take should i go by train solutions simple problem complicated problem is let's say that we want to design an aircraft which can fly at x knots per hour at x feet altitude so we know all that we have, that means we have got a design in mind and now it's complicated because too many people are involved there are designers there are vendors and too many intricacies involved to create that aircraft what about a complex problem complex problem is when i don't know the end result i don't know where i am heading to can somebody give me an example of a complex problem and all of you are going through it and that's having a child a 20 year project when you have a child you don't know what he will look like at 20 years you don't know what he should be at 20 years but now you keep working like every you know you look at the near future okay now kindergarten mein jana hai to now for example i have got a grandson who's 3 years old and my daughter is only worried about admission in kindergarten that's the only thing she knows about her child okay she is not worried about which college he will go to what job will he take up 
so these are complex problems where you don't even know what the future is and you keep evolving as you go along life is to be played like that life is a complex issue and enjoy when you get a lemon enjoy that lemonade then don't have a lemon in your hand and tell somebody i just love an orange juice are yaar lemonade to pee lo na pehle jab orange milega to orange juice pee lena so let's let's look at uh, some of these very very simple things that can make our life simpler easier more comfortable okay so this is when a complex problem comes up and just let you know how now what is the solution to this and the beauty is that the solution is also vuka and this vuka is vision understanding clarity and adaptability i'll just quickly run through them i'll not spend too much of time so first thing is vision uh, vision um, is the answer to your volatility if you have a clear vision vision to battle against the volatile vision to handle the rapid change a clear vision on and focused on the people you are dealing with the right direction the informed choices the communication the belief the focus if these type of things are clear in your life whether professional or personal you will be able to handle the future much more comfortably the next is understanding understanding is three things one is curiosity why is it happening what can happen what can go wrong what are the challenges what is the status quo in your organization in your life ask those questions to be able to uh look at all possible imponderables that come in your life empathy get where people are coming from so as a leader in your organization in your families if a child is saying something you have to understand why is he saying that what are his hopes what are his fears what are his desires so in your professional life and your personal life this is what is important open mind explore new ideas reflect and seek constructive criticism don't keep staying in that closed box and only work under those small options that you have been used to in life the next one is clarity yeah if you have clarity and clarity firstly comes from eliminating the unnecessary if you have too many options eliminate okay like a sculptor he eliminates the unwanted wood and he gets a beautiful statue so chop the fat cut through the complexity and distill the core down to its essence to its essence intuition use the gift of knowing without reasoning trust your gut and your experience and system thinking okay approach problems from a holistic perspective right so this these are some of the things that are answers to our problems the ambiguity is handled very well if you are agile and adaptable you know that things will never be like what you have planned but can i change as situation changes can i take quick decisions can i innovate can i empower people can i leverage people's uh, uh, strengths again both in my family as well as in my work so if you use these four things of vision understanding clarity and adaptability plus ambiguity that will help us resolve the problem now let's dance with uncertainty let's not let's not treat uncertainty as a negative thing let's not think that uncertainty is something bad when uncertainty is taken as a positive thing that you are adventurous about it that you are looking for okay let's see what happens what can go wrong okay so every bit of certainty we think we have brought to our life is a mirage because when you have when you think of certainty you are looking at the you know even in a desert you are it looking very clearly to you that there is water there the illusion of certainty calms us helps us cope with the terror that uncertainty brings 
Now, uncertainty acts like rocket fuel for worry. It causes people to see threats everywhere and makes them more like to react emotionally in response to those threats. So instead of logically, instead of your mind, your heart starts playing a major role. So if you bring your mind in and logically work out why you are concerned, what is that worry, you will be able to find better answers. Now, today's life gives us, or today's world, has a lot of data available. And there are trends. There are data analytics available. With that, you can think and predict according to trends. I'm not talking about astrology. I'm not talking about intuitions. You will be able to predict. All visionary people, all good leaders, whether leader in the family or leader in the corporate world or anywhere, or a business leader, Good leaders stay ahead of the predictability curve. I did about 300 webinars for my uh, learners during COVID. And all I was telling them was how to be prepared for after COVID. We didn't know whether that will take six months or one year or two years. But we were talking about bouncing forward. Bouncing forward, not bouncing back. I said, when you say I'll bounce back, which means you will be back to your capabilities of February 2020 and life would have moved forward and you will be left behind. So you have to predict what things can be happening and start preparing for them. A very clear example that I'm an outbound trainer. I'm an experiential learning trainer, but I went on to online training to say that now this will be required, but be prepared that when we come out of COVID, then there will be both. There will be in-person training and there will be um, online training and there will be a hybrid model. Not today, it's a reality, but we were talking about this in the month of, I'll show you some videos of May 2020 when we were talking of hybrid model. So that means we are predicting things. Some of them may come true, some of them may not come through. So today, what I have told you many, many things, but I will sum them up in three main things. Three main things that you can take from this session. One is crisis management. Learn how to manage crisis happily, adventurously, and not get bogged down. Always ask yourself, what is the way out? Ask yourself, what can I do about it and not Oh, I'm stuck. So you find out at least one reason or one answer. And if you can't do anything about it, then just sit and enjoy because there's nothing else you can do about it. If I can't go out in a lockdown, I just can't go out. That's it. That's the end of it. So why, if I just keep worrying about it, nothing is going to happen. The second thing which I've talked about today is change your attitude. Throughout the presentation, I've talked on various angles of working on your responses, working on your thoughts, your choices, because life is choice. And I have my choices. It is only what choices do I exercise. And the third one is we talk a lot, we think a lot, but we don't take action. So take massive action. Take massive action and that will bring a lot and lot of happiness in your life. I'll end up with this poem ki kal ki baat karte ho kal ki chinta mein din aaj ka barbaad karte ho socho kal jo hoga acha hi hoga kyun kalpit dukh ki chinta din raat karte ho kisi ne kabhi aane wala pal nahi dekha taiyari sab ne ki par samasya ka hal nahi dekha har roz kal ki taiyari karne walo aaj tak kisi ne kal ko nahi dekha बीत गया कल उससे अब कोई वास्ता नहीं है आने वाले कल से बचने का कोई रास्ता नहीं है बीते कल की ना आने वाले का पल की बात किया करो खुश आज में रहो सुखी रहने की का रास्ता यही है सो थैंक यू वेरी मच आई हैव फिनिश्ड एंड इफ आई एम नॉट रॉन्ग आई थिंक आई हैव फिनिश्ड क्वाइट ऑन टाइम
Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. May I come, come back to the call, please? Hello. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, thank you, sir. Um, so to the to all the attendees, uh, <clears throat> if you have any questions, please uh, you can write the questions on the text box, uh, or you can directly ask uh, Bigiri sir right now. Um, before we hand, uh, start the question answer session, I would just like to uh, say a few words. So wow, this was uh, so insightful. We really, really learned some great insights today. It will help us in becoming future ready. Uh, so now uh, the floor is open for question and answers. Uh, please uh, feel free to ask your question, send it uh, directly by unmuting yourself or by writing in the box. I already have some questions coming up. So yes. Uh, incidentally, who's GR? That's me. <laughs> Hello, sir. Can you hear yeah, me? Uh, can I? Uh, I can't see you. Okay. So I like because you had got the answer right. Marriage, teenage kids. Oh, very good. So that is exciting. <laughs> so we have the first question uh, coming from Varun uh, Varun Gupta. Question is: How do we build stronger mental resilience with our teenagers, considering that they are being groomed in VUCA 3D? versus environments we have grown up. Two years of online learning will breed different behaviors versus EQ we would like to build up in future leaders. So I would only say that keep, keep yourself alert, look at what are the current trends and flow with them. Uh, don't try to swim upstream. Nothing will happen. Now, there are many things that I could never, never do. For example, let me tell you, I've lost both my parents and I have never in my life, even once, had a very serious argument with my parents to say that you are wrong. I've never used this word, you are wrong. But I hear this from my children 10 times a day. Dad, you don't know. You know nothing. You are outdated, blah, blah, blah. I, I must have impacted the lives of about 50,000 children through my books, through my podcast and all that. But I have not been able to create even a wee bit of an impact on my own children. So what do I do about it? I just adjust. I, I, what I can't do, if I can do something, I do it. If I can't do something, I accept it and move forward. I don't still sit down and say every time. And of course, I'm a human being. Sometimes emotionally, I'll say, Sunte nahi hai meri baat. But then within a minute, I will tell my wife, oh, it's okay. That is how everyone is doing. So I think uh, the, uh, now online education happened during COVID. Now people are going to school. Some people are still having a type of a hybrid stuff. Some people are not able to go to school. They're still attending online. So I think you have to adjust to whatever is the best option available to you. And that's it. Great. Thank you, sir. Another question coming up from Mukesh ji. Uh, does that worry in the army? That's a question to you, sir. That's a very interesting question. And um, I, I'll tell you, uh, it's more than about 10 years back that I was attending a HR, uh, HR seminar in uh, Mumbai. And there was one speaker who, who asked this question. And then I have asked it to many people that what is, a, what is one fear that really is prime amongst all of us in adults and that is death. And if a human being is fearful of death. My next question is, is a, is a army soldier also a human being or not? And if the answer is yes, then he should equally be fearful of death. Is he fearful of death? Of course he is. 100% he is fearful of death. The only thing is he has learned how to handle that fear. He has learned how to handle that fear. 
if I was to ask you one question, and the question is, why do you think an army person, officer or jawan is going into war when he sees bullets coming in front and he has an option of running away, why doesn't he run away? Why is he doing it? Anyone, anyone to give me an answer to why does he do it? The answers I normally get, I, I thought I'll get some answers from you, but because can, there's silence. Yeah, I can please, say something. Yeah. Uh, so, so the, the duty. yeah, it's the a duty. duty. It's a duty. Yeah, that's right. But more, more Nitin, than that. Nitin, mm -hmm. Nitin, I will, I will like you to not say something. Okay. I want to get it from a non-army person. Yeah, yeah. Let's All say. right. Because let me get their perspective. Yeah, what do you... yourself. This, this... Honey, I think what I want to duty. say something. Basically, it's a duty. It's a commitment. To the, so, have you not towards come the nation, across towards the job? How many of you are from corporate world? Are you not in your corporate world doing your duty? <clears throat> are you not committed in your corporate world? Of course, you are. I don't think there's any doubt about that. So, I people think it's purpose. Sorry. Absolutely, I agree. Purpose. I agree so with people, someone said purpose also. Like, no. People talk about patriotism. People talk about discipline. People talk about training. But let me tell you something. It is not all that. I'll come to that. But before that, I'll give Nitin a chance. And uh, But even before I come to Nitin, I want to ask you one more quick question. Let's say that you suddenly are walking on the <laughs> road. And from nowhere, a bullet comes and hits your head. What will you do? What will you do if a bullet comes and hits your head? Cannot do anything. Can't do anything. You're dead. Yeah, Manisha, what will you do? Nish sorry, Nishita, what will you do? Manisha, what will you do? Let me ask Prashant. Prashant, what, Nilesh was Prashant what would you do? I can't do anything because I'm dead by that time. <laughs> okay, some people say I'll scream. Okay. Some people say I'll shout if I'm not dead by then. I'll tell you a small story. Uh, and I'll try to make it as short as I can. And this is a story of a chap called Captain Jubin Matthews. Who, who was captain when, he, when the story is. Now, of course, he's... Already finished the command of his battalion. He's from my regiment, Bihar regiment. It was in back in about 10, 10, 15 years back, whatever, I don't remember the date. He was fighting the insurgency in the JNK Valley. Now, one night, they got information that there were some terrorists hiding in a house in a village close by. As per procedures, quickly, a QRT, QRT is a quick reaction team was formed and they went, there's a drill, there's a drill to search the house and in that drill, uh, I won't go into details of the drill, but there are some people who are outside the house who give covering fire and then one person will go and there's a drill of how he'll search the first floor, the ground floor and then when ground floor is secure, they'll go to the first floor and all that. So, Captain Jubin Matthew was at the door. Another of his colleague went inside very stealthily with his stand gun pointing out to the, in the darkness. And suddenly there was a sound of a bullet. And Jubin Matthew saw his friend falling down on the ground. Now, I'm telling you it was midnight. There was very little uh, light, maybe the street light or something, but otherwise it's dark inside. He saw this man lying down and he didn't know whether he's dead or he's injured. Now, under the circumstances, he crawled, picked him up on his shoulders and was getting him out when another bullet came and hit his head. Now, Jubin was injured but because he was a he wearing a helmet, he didn't die. So he was rushed to the hospital, given first aid, flown to Jammu, given more treatment. And after two weeks, he was given sick leave. 
sick leave is when you're asked to go home and rest because you require rest before you can go on duty. And then after one month of sick leave, you go back to the hospital and you are examined. If you are okay, you go back on duty. If you are not okay, you are given further treatment. That's the procedure. So the moment he was told to go on sick leave, a signal also goes to the unit and the unit comes to know that he has been granted one, one, one month sick leave. Jubin Matthew should have taken the night train to Delhi where he belonged to from Jammu, but he didn't do that. He went back to the transit camp, took the next morning's convoy and went back to Srinagar. Took the convoy again and went back to his unit, which was in Baramula somewhere and joined the battalion. The commanding officer says, I can't take you. How, how have you come? You're supposed to be uh, on leave. He said, sir, what will I go and do at home? I've got nothing to do there. There are 20 officers authorized in the battalion. We are only 12. If I also go where there'll be only 11 left, why would I pass on my burden to somebody else? And why would I not contribute? He says, but I can't go against medical advice. I can't deploy you in any case because you are not physically fit. He said, sir, but there's one duty officer who stays back in the operation room. Let me do that so that you have your 11 officers available to you. The commanding officer liked the idea, but he didn't have, you know, he didn't, he was not sure whether he can take that decision. So he went one step ahead and asked the brigade commander who said, please, that's a very good example. He's setting, I'll take the risk of decision, take it in writing from him that it's voluntary. And he joined another two weeks, a similar situation came up again. Jubin Matthew went up and got a second bullet injury in his head. My question to you is, how many people would do it in normal life? And maybe Jubin Matthew's own brother will not do it. Whether, you know, they've been born and brought up in the same family, they've got similar education, all that. The Indian Army also draws its people from the same schools, colleges, from the same villages. They are not imported from anywhere. They don't come, come from Mars or Jupiter. They're all from there. But what happens is, and the answer I will give after I listen to Nitin. Yes, Nitin, please go ahead. Oh, and, well, uh, tell uh, yeah, I was just about to say that there is a responsibility and we are leading a group of men, you know, who are all equally committed to the task. So there is no question of uh, moving back, even if there is a risk of your life, because you, you go into uh, that particular task knowing uh, that there would be risk, there would be risk for you over there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's true. I'll add something to it. And it's my perspective and I can be wrong. So don't, don't take that as gospel truth, but take it as one, one view, one perception. We in the army don't die for our country. When you say patriotic, I think you and I are equally patriotic. Not that because I'm, in, I'm wearing a uniform, I'm more patriotic than you are. No. We don't die for the country. We die for the battalion. Hum paltan ki izzat ke liye apni jaan dete hai. Paltan ki izzat. Ab ye paltan ki izzat jo hai, this, this word izzat is not the Hindi dictionary word that you understand. You have to be in the army to understand ye izzat, paltan ki izzat ka matlab kya hai. We die for each other. We die because of our comrades. We die because of the leader who's leading us. I can't let down my battalion. I can't let down my commanding officer. When I get injured and if I have to be given blood, that blood is of my comrades, not of my father, mother, brother, sister, friends. So we know that in crisis, these are the people who matter to us more than our own family. And that brings me to the other thing. And I'm going to leave you with one thought. All corporate people can look at it. People in the army die because of corp because of the organizational culture. It is a culture there that everyone is doing it. It's a culture that is expected out of you. It is a culture that you saw others doing it for you and you'll do it for them. And if I can go a step earlier, if you all remember what happened in Mumbai, when the terrorist attack took place, 
please go through the history of what happened in Taj. All the, all the employees of Taj knew the escape routes. They could have all escaped, but they stayed back. Again, an organizational culture, an example to be taken. There, there are many more organizations which I have trained and I know that they have great culture, but I don't know how many of you will agree. My own perception is there are very few, very few where this culture exists. The MNC culture is all about results. I don't care whether you are well or you're not well. If you don't meet your targets, you're out. And the fear of not meeting the targets is another fear, another worry that we can talk about. So, yes. So that's what my answer to that question was. I don't know whether I really answered it, but I get a little emotional when I talk on this subject. I hope I conveyed something to you. Nishita, you got a hand up. Is there some question you have? No, is it okay if I just take a minute uh, to share a point of view? which please, inspired please. me from this. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank yeah, you so much. Uh, and thanks, Nitin and team. This is very inspiring. I, I have a point of view or, or rather uh, um, experience on the E plus R equal to O, the outcome point you mentioned, right? So I'm in corporate innovation and leadership coaching uh, as, a, as a professional in my day job. And um, I was transitioning from being a consultant for many years into coaching last two years. So I've been in transition. And one of the biggest lessons, and I hope this is probably an answer to a lot of parents here who have preteens and teens, or we are managing uh, our bosses or our organizational teams. One tool which really worked for me and probably you is in the power of questions. So if we are in stress, anxiety, worry, whatever else you spoke about, I think we jump too quickly on even the solution. So in innovation uh, exploration, what we do is we look maximum amount of time on identifying the problem. So if it's one hour, then 50 minutes. What is the problem that we're trying to look at? Why is our kid answering back all the time? Or why is this team member not performing? If we go to the root cause and we define it in then the solution can be as fast as five minutes. So you know, asking the right questions makes a difference. And a very quick example, my last uh, 15 seconds is asking the questions and not giving advice. And this is the worst thing we all do as even in our families or our professional life. Are, why are you screaming? Why can't you do this? I recommend you do this. No advice, rather switch to questions like what's in the way? Um, what's the benefit of this problem? What else is hurting you? I think my personal experience is asking the right questions can solve and having a listening ear rather than giving any advice. Nishta, that is absolutely correct and very powerful questions have a lot of power and but very, very correctly framed questions, open questions and not leading questions. And uh, if those questions are asked well, they are very, very powerful. Uh, just because of time, I will not go into it. But when I used to be running a camp and I dealt with so many children, I have uh, experienced this with children that if you don't give them advice and give them options. And today my daughter, who has a three-year-old son, is actually going through a book saying how to talk to children so that they listen to you. And the other day she was telling me that I've learned that you don't say do this or do that. You give options and say, I either do this or this. So then the child has an option and uh, they feel that they are responsible for that. And I used to, in all my camps, make children do what I wanted them to do, but I never told them it came from them. I maneuvered it in a manner like if I, if I wanted them to get up in the morning. And the whole story behind it, and I won't go to that. But I used to create a situation where saying, but you didn't want to get up in the morning. No, no, sir, we'll get up in the morning. So I came, it came from them. So I didn't tell them to wake up in the morning. They told me what I wanted. So that is how it works. Great. So, uh, yeah, I, I can imagine it's a very interesting session and there can be more, more questions from uh, the participants. So here are the details, uh, contact details of beginners. I'll be... Uh, 
Can yeah. I? Sir, can it's I on just the screen. Intervene? Yes, sir. Nitin. Sir. Nitin, can I just take a minute? Yes, I'll sir. I'll be very happy and do it at the end. I'll be very happy if you can do something which I do at the end of all my sessions. Can you please all, on a scale of one to ten, rate this session like? Did you get any benefit out of it? If you got zero benefit and it was a waste of time, it is one. And if you got some something you learned, it is ten. So please, on a scale of one to ten, let me know where it is. So Nitin, maybe while we are getting the messages, we can yeah we uh, can hand over the digital trophy. Yeah. Yeah. So Bakhtin. let me let me invite let me invite Rahul for a vote of thanks. Uh, so Rahul, over to you. Okay. Thank you. It was it was indeed wonderful. I think the fact that people have stayed, you know, in spite of be running half an hour late, is is the testimony. You know that people have received it really well. And as you learn how to survive in a digital world, we have also learned. You know, if we can't give you the physical momentum, we have come up with a digital moment. So thank you, thank you, Brigadier Basin. But before I close, I think I must capture some of the interesting learnings that I had. Thing, you know, it thanks you that you know you also took us to those scary exam results days when we were all worried. The worry journal, I think that's a new concept that we all learn. And how do I write down my worries so that I don't? It it helps me come out of it faster. How do I surf the time sea or the time waves? You offered. Very practical hints in terms of how we should address the worry, and I think the E plus R is equal to O is the equation that we will take, you know, uh, with us for a very long, long time. And I think the new definition of VUCA, a positive de definition of VUCA, I think is also something you know that I personally uh, uh, will help all of us. And as you know. A lot of people in Shanghai have been locked down for like almost a month or so. So one message to all of the people who are in lockdown: whenever you feel down in this lockdown, I think we all can remember the Brigadier's story, where he was stuck a couple of months at Nathula Pass or in the desert without any information, without um, any news, and he managed to survive. So that's the message we can take. We will definitely survive, you know. And thank God we have everything you know, that he couldn't enjoy. Thank you, thank you, Begit. It was it was absolutely fantastic talk. And we continue. Uh, we will have a next session coming up on first of May from Amaya Prabhu, who is the son of uh, Commerce Minister, uh, sorry, Railway Minister Suresh Prabhu. He has the company Nafa Capital, and we will have some financial investment learnings uh, in the turbulent times. You know, in the next week. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So, uh, all can, uh, if you have completed, please uh, given your feedback. You may uh, close the call. Uh, thank you so much once again, everyone, and really great to have you in the call today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I was very, very uh, happy. I'm very fortunate to have interacted with you all. And I will love to be in touch with many of you, depending on whether, uh, whether you like to interact with me. I am available. And uh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nitin. Thank you, Soman. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rahul. See you. Thank you.